Jonathan from GameSpot Asia here. I'm here with Randy Pitchford, who has just showed off a new build of Borderlands 2. So tell us, like, what's with the, with the whole art style thing going on? Like, how did you decide to make uh, Pandora much brighter than before? I mean, tell us about the design process of Pandora 2.0. Uh, well, you know, in Borderlands 2, we wanted to explore more of this giant planet. Borderlands 1 tended to confine itself to a very small part of the planet, and we tended to see more of those arid, kind of dry wasteland areas. In Borderlands 2, we'll be exploring some lush, grassy kind of areas, so we'll see the color green for the first time in Borderlands. We're going to go uh, even into some volcanic areas where you'll see red lava and, and all next to ice uh, and snow, and so there'll be a lot of white and blue. Uh, there's a lot of interesting uh, places on this planet that we imagined but hadn't had an opp opportunity to build until Borderlands 2. So we're really excited to let players explore how varied of a world this is. You're going to bring it a new class in the next 60 or 90 days, the Macromancer. Could you like go into maybe as much detail as possible, like how she is different from the rest and how she can support a party? We, we did announce the first uh, additional character that we're going to add as DLC and this is the Mechromancer class. Her name is Gage and uh, we since Borderlands 2 is finished we've actually started developing the, the Mechromancer so we were just getting started in the development of it. We have the model built. Uh, we've started to imagine some of the skills and uh, what she can do, she is a master of technology, of robotics. Uh, she's a Mechromancer and one of the things she can do is create uh, uh, summon into existence this robot she's built and she's called this robot Death Trap and it is a very powerful machine. Uh, she can send it at her enemies to do damage, she can also use it to protect herself and defend herself. And it's a really cool, uh, a really cool kind of thing because it turns out to be sort of a pet class in Borderlands. And she'll be available within about 60 to 90 days of the launch. It's, the development's going really good though, so I think it's actually going to be available more on the earlier side of that equation. Maybe even earlier than 60 days. I don't want to change my promise yet because we still have to finish her, but it's going great. And, uh, well, we haven't finished them yet. So we've only got a few of the skills finished for the Mechromancer. Uh, as we complete the skill trees, we'll, we'll release some more details about them. But I, I'd be afraid to go into a lot of detail because some things are tentative. One thing that's likely to stick is one of the trees that's really about the, uh, the Death Trap doing damage to enemies. And he's got this really cool ability called um, Explosive Clap. And the, the robot will do this giant rah, clap kind of move. And when he slaps his hands together, it creates a blast. It will do a lot of area effect damage to enemies nearby and it's really powerful and awesome. Uh, there's a lot of other abilities that allow the, the death trap uh, machine to do damage to enemies. There's also some that allow uh, it to help uh, her and protect her and also to help allies. Uh, so, and, and some of these are still a little P TBD so I don't want to promise anything but there'll be some that you know deliver shields to you or regenerate shield, regenerate your yeah do, yeah and regenerate your shields or maybe uh, send ammo around to out to you and your allies things like that. And, uh, and there's also, uh, the, there's at least one of her skill trees that's actually very, very challenging. It's a preferred advanced user. It's a very technical uh, uh, skill tree that that's, uh, has a lot of nuances to it. And we're still working out the details of that, but it's going uh, to be for more advanced users. We wanted this character to kind of serve the role where someone who loves Borderlands, that's introducing a new player to the game, might want to uh, suggest using the Necromancer on one of the more easy uh, skill trees. But it, we also wanted to suggest since it's coming later, we wanted it to serve the role as being one of the more advanced characters that has a lot of the most nuanced capabilities if you're very skilled at the game. And so it, it kind of serves both of those uh, in, in the designs between the skill trees. Again, we need to finish those skill trees and we'll release some details as we get closer to her being done. Of course, you mentioned before that Borderlands and the Borderlands 2, it actually takes some influences from other games, from FPSs to action RPGs. Now on a related note, what are your thoughts on Diablo 3 which recently came out, which is also an action RPG in that sense? Yeah, I love uh, Diablo 3. Um, I mean, it, it, it's an action in the sense, action RPG in the sense that it runs in real time, but you know, it's still interfaced like a, a you know a typical Blizzard RTS game where you're clicking on the screen and 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 that what what, what it shows us is that uh, RPGs where you collect loot and where you level up are very compelling, even if there's not a lot of skill to the game loop itself. Right? I'm, in Diablo, I move a cursor and I click on an icon. It's the same skill I use to launch the application, uh, which is really interesting because it's so much fun. I like Diablo 3. I'm on my third playthrough right now, um, uh, out of four. 
Uh, I haven't beaten Diablo yet on my third playthrough, but I'm progressing. I think I'm my character's level. I have a wizard character level 55 or so, and I'm having a lot of fun with the game. I really like loot. I, I you know, at first I was kind of um, puzzled by their decision to abandon the skill trees that they developed so expertly in Diablo 2, and instead go with a more kind of unlocking options approach that they took. And I think that removes some of the choice out of the game as I'm leveling my character, uh, because whenever I level up, I'll get new skills, and there's really only one choice, which is try out the new skill. And, uh, and if you like it, you'll stay with it. And if you don't, then you'll just go back to the last thing that you used. Uh, I like the skill tree method where whenever you kind of unlock a new layer, you have two choices, and you're gonna have to pick one choice, one or the other, and, and there's differences, there's trade-offs between them. And I really like that approach. So uh, I, 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 think, um, I think Diablo 3, uh, though, is, deserves to be commended for taking some risks and trying some things while still remembering what made it, the game so strong and, and, and delivering us those core loops that, that kind of uh, uh, engage us so much. Okay, back to Borderlands, I was thinking, um, what, what else can you do to expand the franchise? I mean, are you thinking of actually bringing the name like probably to different genres or whatnot, apart from an FPS? Well, right now our, our attention is entirely dedicated towards delivering Borderlands 2. And we're, because we finished the game and we're in the certification process now, we've started to look ahead towards DLC. Uh, I, we love the brand, we love the franchise. Uh, we, we haven't really thought about plans beyond what we're committed to right here at the, in the moment. Uh, but certainly there's a lot of options and a lot of choices for us. So we'll see what comes uh, as we get down the road. Like possibly more modes, like because um, Steam Fortress 2, they have like this model where they're making new modes back and forth, like a new co-op mode. Like, how about for Borderlands 2 side? Would you think we'll be releasing something like that? Like, any consideration? Well, Borderlands, all of Borderlands is cooperative, so the idea of playing the game alone or with friends is automatic with Borderlands. That's not something we have to add. It's something we already have with the game, and it's one of its, its greatest features. Uh, I think as far as other ideas, you know, there's all kinds of ideas that always get kicked around, but um, nothing we've announced, nothing we've committed ourselves to yet. Uh, as I said, right now the focus is making sure that the game we planned, the game we designed, is is uh, as perfect as we can get it, so we can deliver it worldwide. And the launch date's coming soon, so uh, we don't want to we don't want to be too focused on things that might happen down the road at a consequence of the value that's about to come out right now. So we've really focused and dedicated ourselves to what to what our customers want, what we've committed ourselves to. Okay, let's talk about the music of the game. Like you have hired Jasper Koo to actually compose it. So what? Actually, is it about his style that would mix with Borderlands 2? Well, Jasper's one of the guys that's been involved. There's actually a number of folks. Uh, Race and Varner is, uh, has been dr driving a lot of the music production in Borderlands 2. He's even uh, got some of his own work in the game. It's, I'm really proud of it. You know, there's another fun thing, too. Uh, on Pandora, there's sort of a, a, a broadcast network, uh, the Echo, and, uh, and there's radios around. And we actually have a lot of original music created by people at Gearbox that are, that are, that's in the game in that way. Uh, and, you know, uh, we, we also have a fun time licensing music as well. Uh, uh, you remember the intro to Borderlands 1 is where we discovered um, we discovered Cage the Elephant and introduced the, the world to them with their great song, uh, Ain't No Rest for the Wicked. And I remember when I first discovered those guys back before anybody knew who they were, and, and uh, I, was re I really loved their music, and I was really happy to introduce the world to them through the game, and it really helped them take off. And uh, so we've got some other folks we really love that we've licensed song, we've composed original music. Uh, uh, the, the Several composers have, have helped race in, and he's directed this process and I think if you if you um, if you like Borderlands you're in for a treat because we've got probably about two to three times as much music and uh, original stuff and licensed stuff and some really great material that, that uh, lends itself uh, to the game well and I think you'll really enjoy it. So in terms of post game content you showed us a really big boss earlier on Theramorphous so there'll definitely be more than Terranomorphous would you? Yeah, well, Terramorphous is an interesting, he's almost like a raid boss, and he's one of many things that, that you can uh, deal with, uh, even after you've completed the story, even after you've reached the level cap. There's a lot to do on Pandora, and we wanted to, uh, you know, when we were thinking about Borderlands 2, we really wanted to make the game more of a hobby. You know, because we love the game and the systems behind it, and it's fun to, to find loot. Uh, but but doing the same things over and over again sometimes, uh, you know, it, 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 it can, after your 500th hour, some of it starts to feel like you've done a bit much. So so we wanted to we wanted to uh, make sure that there were some things that that are fun to do even after you've completed all of the narrative missions and uh, and completed the storyline, and even after you've reached level cap. And Terramorphous is just one of those things. And there'll be some other surprises when you get the game too. 
without spoiling so much, what happened to Brick? You've already revealed Roland, you've revealed uh, the Siren and Mordecai. You'll see. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to na- uh, make any spoilers. But uh, yeah, each of those NPCs and other NPCs that we remember from Borderlands One has a role to play in the narrative of Borderlands Two. And I, I really don't want to spoil anything. Uh, but uh, yeah, we, we've mentioned that they're all there, and you'll 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 bump into him. All right. Thanks a lot. Cheers.